Every Friday afternoon, in front of the small mosque on the outskirts of Khartoum, hundreds of men gather together to sing and dance for hours in order to spark a mystical contact with God. They are the dervish dancers, the Sufis from Ondurman. In the words of Mircea Eliade, Sufism is an interior facet of Islam. It's a way of life that searches for the realization of unity and the presence of God through love, knowledge based on experience and the ecstatic union with the Creator, to whom all the love of what is mystic is addressed. Who are the Sufis? What are they like? How did they cross the desert and enter the forests? How do they live in the big cities of our world? I have dedicated my time to studying the Sufis, their lives, and above all, their ideas. I've discovered a very important world. This is the world I wanted to depict. All the figures that appear in my works with their physical and mental settings, with their nights and days, with their universal vision. The term Sufi is most likely derived from the wool dresses, or Suf, which were used by the ascetic Muslims who were named and addressed as poor or dervish. The Sufi texts reveal that the asceticism and devotional activities of the Christian monks played an important role in the birth of Sufism. But the true origin of the Sufi movement is found in Islam alone, and more specifically, in the Quran. The Sufis have always been persecuted by Orthodox Islam. Orthodox Muslims have always hurled insults against the pantheism of the Sufis, against their dissolute behavior and their carelessness with the prayers, fasting, and pilgrimage to the Mecca. Human beings are part of this universe, a living part as well as a responsible part. The universe is part of man, too. This vision is shared by several religions. But I think that Islamic Sufism does this in the most complete way. For the Sufis, man was created with great wisdom and a love of God and love for all other human beings, for the trees, the birds, and all the beauties and beings that surround him. Sufism gives the individual freedom and at the same time responsibility. When an individual is conscious of his liberty and his responsibility, he becomes a creator, just like God himself. For the Sufis, man is a microcosm and the universe the macrocosm. Man is the clearest image of the divine in the mirror of creation. A surah or chapter of the Quran that touches the heart of these men is that which talks about God as a being who is closer to man than his jugular vein. Another element of the Quran that they gladly accept is the recommendation to practice meditation, an act that is carried out accompanied by controlled respiration, music, and dance, which provokes individual and collective ecstasy. <laughs> The color green represents paradise. It's the color of life. Where you find the color green, you will find life. You will find trees, water, birds, a sheltering shade, and a breeze. Everything is linked to the color green. It is the opposite of poverty, the opposite of fire and repression. It is the space for human existence incorporated in nature. It is the future of man. Green is the color that dominates my work. And it's the color of the Sufis. Sufis love the color green because in it they find a symbol of proximity to the Prophet Muhammad. 
We believe it to be a form of union with Islam. Rashid Diab is a Sudanese artist and art theoretician, an example of the approach to the West that has been produced in African art since World War II. He studied and worked in Madrid for 20 years where he met Fernando Belver and Mercedes, his present wife. An artist is a philosopher. He should know a lot about art and reflect on the art he creates, his own production. An artist is not an interior decorator, nor is he the kind of person who makes pretty things. For me, a painting sums up all human history. African art is distinguished for one very simple thing. Its goal is to fit into nature, not separate itself from nature, not take advantage of nature, but form part of nature. A lot of people talk about globalization and the new theories, that the world is small. The world has always been small in art. The world, for an artist, is his place. For me, what is human is what matters. What is human entails everything. What is human entails good conception. What is human entails respecting one another. Because if you are human, you believe that everyone else is human. If you aren't human, you believe that everyone else is an animal. And this is a very difficult concept to apply to art because no culture has the right to judge another culture under any circumstances. Each one has its origins, its roots, and its elements. And if you don't study painting, you cannot express your opinion about it. Besides his own culture, the artist reflects human culture. The philosophy of a person is his art. Women in Sudan wear a top. I'm not sure what it's called in English. The top is a kind of cloth that she wraps around her entire body. This top comes in many colors. I love colors, so I've studied this extensively. What I mean is that through the tops of Sudanese women, I study color more than the figure. They look like paintings in the end, but have other qualities. They're very pretty because they have more curves. The curve with the color and the shape and how the cloth falls, well, to me, they are outlines. And they're not really paintings because my paintings are semi-abstract. <laughs> the children of Rashid and Mercedes were born in Spain. They both speak English and French, as well as Spanish and Arabic. They use both of these languages between them interchangeably. As a European woman who has come to live in Sudan, I could say that I never have had any problems with the people here. They have respected me as I am. Of course, you know that you always have to be respectful of the customs here and not be difficult. For example, I would never think of wearing a miniskirt on the street. It's not a custom here, and I wouldn't do it. In reality, everyone has treated me with respect. I realize that I can work, and that all the women work as well, not just me. I work in the art gallery, but I see women working at the bank, working for companies. They even have executive positions. 